Wait, so what is this? Let me explain. This is a indie horror slash cartoon slash comedy game. Yeah, it's a weird combo, I'll be the first to say it, but reserve your judgment for a second. This game is part of a series, a rather large one to be exact. This is the first of nine total planned games in the anthology of the Killer series, although there are only eight currently available. Hopefully by the time I made a video on all eight of these bad boys, the ninth and final installment will just be coming out. Originally, these games were released by a creator that went by the name of Garment District on Game Jolt. Now, I'm gonna spoil a surprise twist because eventually the creator Garment District revealed that they were none other than the Catamites. What's the Catamites? Uh, don't worry about that word too much, but the Catamites is a prolific and at this point quite ancient game developer that has dominated the... This game might be genius, but it also might be a waking dream from which I cannot escape... genre. You might know the hit indie title Space Funeral, which took the indie game world by storm with its bizarre visuals, bizarre setting, bizarre approach to storytelling, bizarre everything, basically. But this tireless creator is also responsible for a probably lesser known game called Goblet Grotto. which I will eventually make a video on when I have comprehended it fully, or I will die trying. Anyway, back to the point. This series actually has some serious indie pedigree. The Catamites always brings it with content that can be speculated about. And at this point has probably fueled multiple YouTubers' career with questions like, what does the story of these games mean? Who or what do these characters represent? So with the promise of something that's going to challenge our smooth video game brains, let's jump in. Uh, we're greeted with a splash screen telling us the name of this particular game, which I probably should have mentioned earlier is Voice of the Killer. <laughs> when we proceed, we're given a brief little intro where we're informed that our game window into this world is actually a zine written by our plucky heroine BB, who looks a little bit like she was a reject from Kablam. Now, for those of you that were born after the heyday of print media, zine refers to a magazine. It was at one point common for on-the-street journalists, or even people that just had special interests, to independently publish a small zine. Hard to imagine, I know, but before Twitter it was difficult to convince people to listen to what kind of tacos you had for dinner. But putting it in print form just made it a tad bit more likely and palatable. History lesson over. Anyway, BB works at a life insurance company because she wants to use their printers to publish her zine, but she's on her probationary intro period. So, as we're walking around, we find that this game controls only with WASD and ENTER. We bump into these eyeballs and they give us flavor text delivered through BB's colorful perspective on the world. She's instantly a very likable protagonist because we get direct access to her thoughts, and she's quite relatable. Especially because she's dealing with something that many of us have gone through. Not quite fitting in at your job. BB is informed from a rather nasty email that she has to cold call 100 contacts today or be fired. How can we get these contacts? Well, from a mysterious contact sheet that we're going to have to go questing after. Now, at this bizarre life insurance company, it's corporate policy to wear a sheet to retain anonymity. This certainly creates a uh, spooky workplace atmosphere, but it's probably more likely a jab at how corporate culture expects us all to behave and look in a way that's acceptable and reflect company policy. Earlier in the game, there's even a dig about agile, so the creator probably has been or still is in the software development industry. Clearly the game has something to say about the modern workplace, and it's definitely nothing positive. As we're wandering around the office in search of our call list, I have to draw attention to the atmosphere. The Catamites always brings it with the THICK atmosphere, and he's laying it on here. EXTRA THICK! There's a hubbub and busy undertone to the office that's a strange mix of comfortingly repetitive and claustrophobically oppressive. This game is also delightful in its surreal presentation. It feels a little bit like one of those dreams where you're doing your mundane daily life stuff, but in an environment that doesn't quite make sense. I find this dreamlike quality to be somewhat rare in modern games. Off the top of my head, Kingdom Hearts 1 specifically had so much bizarre stuff thrown in together that it felt like a strange dream, and there's obviously the reigning champ Yume Nikki, but besides that, not a lot of stuff comes to mind. Whatever, I love the atmosphere here, moving on. As we continue looking for our call sheet, we're getting lore drops. Apparently, thousands of residents in this city have gone missing and are presumed dead. 
somehow murdered by some singular killer. Now, as a life insurance company, clearly we can't be paying out to every schmuck that goes missing, so the police are here to facilitate extra investigation. BB goes deep into the underbelly of the office and begins poking around, perhaps somewhere she shouldn't be. This is where the game starts to take on horror elements, shifting that surreal tone it had earlier to a much more sinister one. No longer is BB merely failing at making office small talk. Now she's running from sinister shadow people. Anyway, try as we might to run, eventually they will get us. And when they do, we get what may be the mildest jump scare of all time. Yeah! Mr. Dink from Doug is apparently in charge of the police investigation happening here. So, we're let off the hook this time, but doing a little more investigation of her own, BB discovers that there's some sort of dark cult right here in the building that's venerating the mysterious killer? Creepy death cult aside, BB is eventually hypnotized by the dull and repetitive atmosphere of corporatism into becoming the perfect jigsaw piece that will fit right in in her corporate environment. We cut abruptly from BB's soul-crushing job to an actual dream she's having. She's on the LCL shore from the end of Evangelion, and there's a giant tongue in the water and clumps of hair growing in the sand. Management has a nice chunk of tongue cooked up for her, and she wastes no time going to town on that succulent treat. She then wakes up to find her pillow gone. <laughs> It's happened to all of us. She then checks her phone messages to find that, darn, the entire office was burned down in the night and will be closed indefinitely. Also, because she was on her probationary period, she won't be getting any severance pay. Dang, uh, just another day in this strange town. Wait, so what the hell did all that mean? Who was the killer? Why are there thousands of people disappearing daily? Hey, not so fast. You're not getting an analysis out of me that easily. We got like eight more of these to get through, so hold your horses. But for now, go play this game. It's short, surreal, atmospheric, captivating, and delightful. Also, free. Also, it looks like from the vote that we're gonna be taking a look at some PS1 stuff. I'm surprised that people seem to have an interest in PS1, but I'm also happy because I like collecting physical media and I've got a lot of PS1 stuff to get through. So if that's the content you wanna see, we can stay busy for quite a while. Anyway, here's a prophecy for you. You're gonna subscribe, like, and stay tuned for more content to come. Doom Prophet, out.